Thanks, Robert. Glad to see uh, a lot of familiar faces in the crowd. Glad to see uh, uh, some new faces as well. Um, I think uh, I, I went to Toronto about uh, a month and a half ago, and they basically told me that the junior resource sector was dead. That basically no one's going to uh, invest in it anymore. Uh, I think in Sweden, I think there's a, a totally different uh, perspective. You know, I think that is the real place to make big money in the stock market. If you look at the successes we've had in the, the lending group, look at the real successful companies around the world, this is still the best place to make big upside returns is in looking smaller companies, big resources. I think Comron is a very good example of that. We went in there early, we got some good blocks. I think Africa Oil is another example of that. I think it's all part of the Lundin philosophy. Even Lundin Petroleum, which has now become a very big company, has been doing most of its value creation through the drill bit. So Africa Oil, for those of you who have been here before, uh, I will repeat a little bit of, of uh, the background story for those who haven't seen it. Uh, uh, but uh, really what I'm here to talk about tonight is really focusing on what we're doing uh, going forward in the future. I think the, uh, uh, the uh, 2012 was a very good year, obviously. We, uh, we found a lot of oil, we found two new discoveries, we found oil, we proved up one basin. I think 2013 is really going to be the pivotal year for, uh, for Africa oil. I think uh, what I call it is a proof in the pudding. I think we have found oil. Now we got to find out how big is it, is it commercial, and what type of economics we have, and really start opening up other new basins within the, the trend. So again, we have, I think, opened up three basins. Certainly the Lokajar Basin is the most advanced one, where we actually have tested oil out from two wells, uh, the Gamia Discovery, the uh, the Triga discovery. Um, uh, North Anza, North Takana, we now have drilled two wells, the uh, Pai Pai well and the Sabisa well, but we believe we've proven the system, but uh, again, the proof is still in the pudding. We still need to do a, a test to, to confirm that, uh, that those systems are working. So really what we're gonna do in 2013 is just focus on three different uh, areas. You'll see, uh, I'll go through the activity that we've got planned. Uh, you'll see that we're gonna be drilling up exploration prospects in the local chart basin. So, 50% of our budget this year and half of our wells, or half of our rigs are going to be devoted exclusively to the Lokachar Basin and just proving up what we've already discovered. The other three wells and the other half of our budget is really going to, to opening up new basins, the Turkana, the Chubahar, the Anza Basin, the Carrier Basin, etc. And we see opening up new basins as really the big bang for our buck. I think as we go through and drill more discoveries in the Lokachar Basin, Hopefully we gain more momentum, our, our share price continues to appreciate, especially as we start getting closer to commerciality and getting people uh, excited about the commerciality. But I think if you look at where the next big jump of the share price would come, it's opening up one of these new bases. So we are focused on that, and we are gonna be spending a lot of time and effort trying to focus uh, on new bases. Uh, we also are gonna be spending some time on testing and appraising the new discoveries we've already got and the new, any new discoveries we may get. So uh, we do have a 3D seismic proof coming in for the first time. We're going to do a large 3D survey over the southern string of pearls. Uh, we are starting to drill some uh, uh, appraisal wells. Uh, the uh, Twiga 1 uh, uh, appraisal is probably going to be our first appraisal. But we do want to start moving forward, booking commercial reserves, and moving forward on that. But really, this is the more important, these two things, drilling up our exploration prospects and opening up new bases is where you're going to see us uh, focus today. So, as Lucas said uh, uh, in his opening remarks, it's been a lot slower than we'd like. Um, you know, we are, uh, when, I, when I first scheduled this meeting, I said this is going to be fantastic timing. I'm going to be announcing GAMIA results, I'm going to be announcing uh, Sabisa results, I'm going to be announcing uh, uh, Atuko uh, results potentially. And what we're finding in Africa is that everything just seems to take longer. I'll talk through some things about the wells tonight. Unfortunately, we haven't made press releases on some of the new wells, so I'll, I'll give you an update, but I can't give you specifics until we've actually finished those wells and uh, test them. And I'll give you a timeline of when we think the, uh, that news is coming out. But take this with a grain of salt. This is Africa. What we're finding is everything is taking longer than we, than we would like and what we expect. But I will say that we are starting to accelerate. So we're not only accelerating, we're drilling wells faster and more efficiently, 
we're bringing in three more rigs. So by the end of the third quarter, we're gonna have six rigs working full time. So by definition, if we drill 60 day wells, we're gonna have a, 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 a well uh, announced every other month at least. And I think uh, you'll see quite a quite a acceleration of, of not only our activity, but the news flow for the company. So all of you have seen this uh, before. This is the, 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 the map that uh, I like to show because it, it shows why we got into this play and what, what drove us into East Africa. And really what we saw was three countries, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia, that hadn't had any wells built in 20 years. And yet all around them, people be, seemed to be finding multi-billion barrel oil fields. And uh, you know, we scratched our head a bit and tried to figure out why that was. The majors have been in here, they've done a round of exploration. They've basically proven that the systems that are doing so well around us um, uh, all extend into these areas. So we've got four separate petroleum systems. We've got the oldest one is this purple section here, which is the Permal Triassic. We're going to be drilling the first well in July in the Miyagin Basin. Our partner, New Age, is operating, and we're going to be able to test this system for the first time. Um, we've got, uh, Somalia and Puntland, we'll talk a little bit about Orange Petroleum. We did drill two wells there. This system is just the same as Yemen. Uh, where they have six billion barrels of oil. Uh, we're getting ready to drill two, we, we just finished drilling two wells here. And we think we've proven a petroleum <coughs> system. So we're quite excited about Somalia and Orange, and uh, we will talk a bit about that as well. Um, Sudan, where we had uh, previously explored in the Cretaceous Rift, again, that seems to extend right through the middle of Kenya. We drilled the Pai Pai well. We definitely found hydrocarbons there. We don't know whether it's light oil or gas condensate. We don't know if the rates are going to be commercial, but it, again, it's proved up this system and has given us a lot of encouragement for Block 9, where we're going to be doing a drilling two wells later this year. But the gold, the golden trend is really where, um, this is where our big focus is. This is the tertiary rift. It's the same rift that our friends in Palo uh, were successful at in Uganda. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's where we're going to be spending about 85% of our budget this year really working on the tertiary. We think that is really the sweet spot in our play. So we'll go out through this in detail, um, but I think the reason we're here and the reason that uh, we have such a good acreage position here is because we were the first one. We saw this six or seven years ago, we had this concept, we were able to come in and pick up this massive acreage position, 250,000 square kilometers, about 70 million acres of land. Uh, so um, we essentially have all the good acreage in, in, in this trend. Uh, we, we don't see too many other companies coming and signing stuff up here because Really what's left is the scraps. We, we've taken all the good stuff and that's driven companies to come to us. So we were able to get Tullo, uh, who's been a fantastic partner. They brought all of their experience from Uganda uh, to bear on here and we've learned a lot from them uh, geologically. Uh, we just brought in Marathon. Uh, Tullo had been paying our way for the last couple of years, but unfortunately those good days are over. We're paying our own way in this uh, in these blocks now, but our friend Marathon has come in with these three blocks they're going to be paying 100% of our costs this year and into next year in those three blocks. So the other thing that's happening is we're getting a lot of phone calls. So the majors, uh, not only with what we found here, but offshore in Madagascar or in, uh, in uh, Mozambique and uh, Tanzania, they're finding massive gas fields. So now East Africa has become one of the hottest exploration places on Earth. The big boys realize they've missed out and they're coming to us because they know that we're one of the only ones that has the acreage that they can get into. So uh, uh, quite a bit of activity uh, in our area. This is also the one that Lucas was talking about. This is, this is the slide we go to bed. All of the African oil people dream about this slide every night. So when, when we're laying in bed, we're, we're counting, uh, some people are counting sheep, we're counting prospects. So this, th these blocks here um, are all African oil blocks, just our tertiary trend and our Cretaceous trend. Um, as, as Lucas said, this covers the size of the entire North Sea. So it's very rare in this day and age that you're able to open up a new basin. It's, it's unheard of to have one of this size that you own the entire thing. Uh, we have 130 prospects and leads that we've now mapped in these blocks. We've drilled three wells effectively now, uh, working on our fourth one uh, soon, and we've made three discoveries uh, uh, in these wells. So of the 130 we've got left, we have a pretty high certainty that there's going to be significant additional discoveries. So let's start the, in the Lokachar Basin, because this is the basin we really have proven out, and now we think that it has been de-risked significantly. We think 
Silk Guitar Basin, we're going to see a very high success rate. For those of you who are familiar with Fellow, they had about an 88% success rate in their Uganda farm. I'm not proposing that we're going to have that yet, but I think we're going to see a very high success rate in the basin, particularly on this, what we call the string of pearls. So we now have drilled two wells. Uh, these are, these are uh, three-way roll of granite climbs against the basin boundary wall. We drilled the Gamia Discovery, we drilled the Quiga Discovery. We think every one of these string of pearls has a very high chance of fine quality. The only real question is how thick and how good a quality pay is going to be on those. The other thing that's quite interesting is we're, we're now moving over to the other side of the basin, we call the Ram Club. So this is opening up a whole new uh, uh, potential area in the, uh, uh, in the Low Guitar Basin. So we, we spud this well uh, this month. Uh, making good progress now, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we know there's oil over there. We've already got oil in shallow boreholes, and we've got an old shell well here on the road that has oil in there. So we don't think charge and source rock is a real issue. It's really about trap and, and reservoir. But this is this is about as simple as it gets. You know, this is the bunk Riga that we found. This is the bunk Gamia we found. The next well we drill is 12. The trend is going to be Alice, which is the bunk right between those two. Each one of these bumps that we see along this trend, we think, has a very high chance of success. So the first one we drilled, Gamia, um, was a bit of a surprise in that we found an incredibly thick sandstone uh, in the upper row where we're standing. We actually had over 200 meters of sand uh, in that well, uh, 100 meters of which was along this pay announced by a uh, fellow fellow. We also had a lower reservoir here the, in the Lacombe sand, we'll talk a little bit about that. Tullow at the time said that they didn't think it was a reservoir. Um, we said it was, and uh, we tested that now and, and proved to be right that, that, that there is a reservoir there. So as far as reserves, this is the only well that our, our reserve auditor has looked at uh, and given us uh, resources on. So what they gave us basically was this little area here, which was just this small salt block, as continuous resource. So about 50 million barrels of recoverable oil they had in there, upside of about 100 million. That's based on 100 meters of total net pay. Uh, they did not count the uh, lower the cone sand uh, 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 as did uh, Tullow. Um, they also gave us a large area here up depth of prospective resource, 137 million barrels most likely, up to 370 million in the high case. And interestingly, in this area, they cut the net pay down from 100 to 50 meters of net pay. So, if we can prove 100 meters of net pay in this area with the well that we're going to be drilling uh, probably in 2014, this number would double. So right now we're looking at probably, we, we think about 188 million barrels uh, in Zambia based on the current uh, pay numbers, but significantly increasing if we find the same type of pay. So we have uh, tested this well. Uh, we're in the process of testing this well. Uh, the, the main reservoirs are this aware we're sandstones, which are these sands up above. Uh, again, we just tagged a little bit of what we call the lower Lacombe sand, just uh, we think a little sliver here. And this is the one where we had some uh, issues about uh, whether we thought it was pay and our partners didn't. Uh, indeed, we were proven right. We tested 280 barrels a day of uh, 30 degree oil out of this. Uh, it is a poorer reservoir than the one above, but at these type of rates, uh, these will be commercial wells uh, as part of a uh, field development. So we will be adding somewhere between 20 and 40 meters of net pay uh, to our reserves uh, uh, calculation just from this sand above. More interestingly, we are testing six reservoirs above this. So these are, the, or, sorry, five tests in the reservoirs above this. So these are uh, in the best net pay sands. And interestingly, two of these reservoirs are ones that we never counted as pay before. So, when we got the Tweeger results, when we looked at the core, when we looked at the test data, we started recalibrating what we thought the reservoir quality was in this sand. And we reran our logs, and lo and behold, we found that a lot of the stuff we, we, we eliminated as reservoir, based on the previous log response, uh, looked like it could be potential reservoir. So what we find is that two of these zones that we will test actually were not counted as reservoir before. If we pull oil out of those, we should be able to add a significant amount of reservoir to that 100 meters uh, that we had previously announced. So we 
just finished DSP-4, we're moving on to DSP-5 and 6. Uh, again, timing standpoint, these tests are generally taking about 10 days each. So 20 days from now, we should have all six tests completed and we should announce the results. In the, the announcement of that result, uh, we will also be talking about the uh, potential increase in that type. So I think uh, the two important things to look for are the flow rates, the, the calculated flow rates for the PI, and then uh, moving the, the potential increase in that pay, I think uh, um, we, we should be able to round up those uh, at that time. Twiga was the one that we, uh, we uh, tested last time. Uh, Twiga was kind of a funny story. My, my, my brother Lars in, uh, in Minnesota told me that uh, he, he, he goes on the blog sites and he sees them analyze me on, on these presentations. And when I did the presentation last November, said every time I said the word Twiga, my shoulders slumped. <laughs> and therefore, it was a dry hole. Everybody was convinced it was a dry hole. It was not the other <laughs> so, uh, nothing could be further than the truth. I'm trying to keep my body position as neutral as possible tonight. We're going to talk about these things that aren't disclosed. So, hopefully, don't read into that because the, 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 the body uh, motion analysis was incorrect last time. Uh, the most important thing that we really got out of Twiga were, were these numbers. We came into the building Twiga thinking we had challenging reservoirs. The reason we thought we had challenging reservoirs is because we were having trouble getting samples on MDT. And we had great porosity, 23 to 29%, uh, but when we tried to flow oil out of these zones, it wouldn't flow. So we had some real concerns about permeability. Then we took a core. A core, uh, our previous number was, we were thinking it was 50 to at most 100 milligrams of permeability. The core, when we analyzed it, actually had 100 milliDarcy's up to three darcy's of permeability, which is really excellent reservoir quality. Um, and what, what we what we determined, and then we tested the well, we tested 2,800 barrels a day from just these three zones, uh, but these are all constrained by the artificial lift. We believe that these flow, and if we put this well on production, it would flow 5,200 barrels a day. Um, so to us, the important number is this one, the productivity in we have a very good productivity index of these sands. These sands will produce. And we now have upped our, our, our permeability not only in this well, but when we look at uh, Gamia, it's the same type of log analysis. It's the same type of sands. So we're expecting the same rates out of, of Gamia, if not better. So I think that was the biggest thing that we found in the Twiga well, is that the reservoirs were much better than we thought. Uh, we should also point out we only we only perked the lower 30 meters of reservoir. There's another 40 meters of good sand up dip. So one of the first wells we're gonna be drilling with the, one of the new rigs we're bringing in is a, an up dip appraisal to try to prove that all 70 meters of good sand uh, is, in, is, in, uh, is, is in the oil column. And it has reservoir quality uh, just as good as what the lower uh, part of the is. Uh, there was another strange reservoir in this one. We went into a long section that had oil shows all the way through at about 800 meters of, of fractured tight sands. Uh, we did test those. We did get a little flow out of one of the lower ones, but uh, not very commercial, probably 15, 20 barrels a day. But the interesting thing is it's, it, it's 800 meters of fractured reservoir. And every single fracture, every single zone we drilled it was filled with oil. So this tells us that there's a, a pretty good source rock there for pumping oil, even to the, the tightest of rocks. So we are kind of putting this one on the back burner for now. We're going to focus on the, the easiest, best reservoir, but this is something we will come back to because this is a, a, a pretty significant uh, uh, potential in this lower zone. So that's really what I want to say about, about last year's program. I think really from here on, I want to talk about what we're going to do this year. So uh, obviously, this is, our, this is our sweet spot right now. The low guitar basin where we found these two oil fields where we've got all these low risk crop plays. This is where we're gonna be spending a lot of time and effort and our money. So as I said before, three of our six rigs are going to be in this basin. They're gonna be drilling uh, new exploration plays. They're also gonna be drilling uh, some appraisal wells as well. Uh, the other three rigs, one of them is up here in South Como where we're just finishing off the Savisa well. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. It will likely move to Tutule as the next location, which is a well right across the basin. And then it'll come over to a new basin, the Chubahara Basin, that we're quite excited about to drill through Viva. Uh, we've designed another contract for a well. The, this rig is going to be coming in here to Block 9, and we're going to drill one firm well and very likely drill a well back to back uh, on the Cretaceous plane. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll talk about each of these individually. And then the sixth 
Spring is actually going up into the Ogden Basin. Uh, our partner, New Wave, is going to be operating a well in the Ogden Basin. Uh, I think it's going to be very handy to have that rig in Ethiopia. This is the same rig that we used in uh, Somalia to drill our two wells in Kulin. If we have encouragement in any of these wells, uh, it'll be nice having a, a good rig here next door that we can bring over to the South Home when it returns to, to this additional drill. So these are the six rigs we've got. Uh, as I said, these three on the, on the, on the left-hand side of the slide are going to be in the local char basin. There's a weather port rig that we've got now, which basically is just going to stay on the string of pearls and keep drilling wells along the string of pearls. The Saxon rig, which was the well we had at Pai Pai, is the one now drilling in the Tuco, uh, which is the old capital prospect. And it probably will stay on the other side of the basin if it's successful here, although very likely it will go over and drill one well on the string of pearls while we're getting location to this. And then we've also brought in a lightweight rig that can drill shallow wells very quickly and also do testing. So again, trying to accelerate the program. This, this rig can be moved in about a week to 10 days versus the, uh, the other ones taking uh, at least 30 days to move. So this is one we can move around much quicker and, and do some of the, uh, the operations. The other rigs, uh, this is the, the Polish rig, OJEC 75, and this is the one that's going to be staying up in the South Home, and it'll just stay there for the rest of the year. Uh, this is the Great Wall rig. We were quite fortunate that there was a very high quality Chinese rig already in Kenya drilling geothermal wells. We were able to take that, and uh, it'll be very cheap, uh, only about a million and a half to mobilize that two locations. And then uh, the Saxon rig, this is the one that we had in, uh, again in uh, at, uh, Kulan. It's moving over, and it's going to be in. Uh, the Ogden Basin, and possibly available for future work in uh, Ethiopia. Um, to be able to keep these six uh, rigs working, we, we are going to have a very active seismic program as well. We're bringing in the first 3D crew, which is basically going to be a, a large 550 square kilometer 3D, covering about six of the string of pearls uh, in the south uh, uh, to help us do an appraisal drill. Uh, we also have three different uh, um, 2D crews onshore and one 2D crew offshore actually shooting out of the lake. So it's important to be able to get enough seismic to keep these rigs busy. Although we do have appraisal work that we can uh, fall back on if we do start running behind the prospect. Uh, one of the first wells we're going to drill is, is probably our lowest risk one, which is the Akalis well. Uh, this is located right between our two discoveries. It's probably the best looking structure we've got in the basin. Um, and uh, we think that there's a very low risk of, of, of not uh, finding uh, uh, hydrocarbons here. Again, the, the, pay thick, the sand thickness in the Gambia is about 225 meters. The sand thickness there here in Cree is somewhere up is around 70 meters. So we expect to see maybe something in between those two numbers uh, uh, for the, uh, the Akalis uh, well. The one we're drilling now is a Tuco. A Tuco is starting with this, uh, a whole new play called the ramp play on the other side of the base. So some of you have been here before, you'll recall, this is still my favorite prospect. This is the one we would have drilled first had Cullo not come in here. We like this, it's a nice, simple, tilted fault block. It's right near Lopro where the Shell tested oil before. So we know there's good charge. This is the cooking pot where the oil is generated. Uh, we have oil here, we have oil uh, in Shell and boreholes here. So we think charge is very uh, uh, low risk. We have the shell well that actually penetrated this nice baton sand, so we think we have a pretty good chance for a good reservoir. And what we really like is the size. You know, the most likely case here is 230 million barrels. The upside case is almost half a billion, is over half a billion barrels. So, uh, some of you have heard me say before that the threshold volume for development here is between 300 and 500 million barrels. This well on its own could almost be a, a standalone development project if it's successful. So the other thing we like about this is that if we are successful here at Tuco, we've got four more prospects already outlined uh, on the same plate, and including Eloy, which will be our next one. Uh, again, it's a big prospect, 200 million most likely, uh, 450 million uh, uh, upside. So this could open up a whole new fairway on the other side of the basin that could be as big or even bigger than the uh, string of pearls on that side. So it's a critical well. Again, we're drilling that now. Body language, we're, we're up in this, uh, this uh, upper awareness and the tone here, and uh, we expect to have results on that probably by uh, mid July. Um, keeping in the tertiary trend, as, as Lucas said, we actually have 10 basins within the tertiary trend, and we have two other basins uh, in the uh, Cretaceous trend. So there's, there's, there's a, a large number of basins still to evaluate. 
The biggest basin we got with the most upside potential is what's called the Tertana Basin. This is a large basin that extends through Tendia up into South Austin. So this is a basin I think um, Tullow thinks is, is our most protected basin. It's also one that has about 45% of our protected resources. So it's a, it's a very important basin to us and we're drilling the first well now to Visa in what we call the nor northern string of pearls. And uh, the key to Savisa is that if it's successful, it unlocks a whole large play fairway in the, in the northern part of this uh, basin. So Savisa is drilling right now. It's a, very similar to those ones we saw in the top. Uh, big basin falls uh, up against their uh, three-way dip closure. So we've drilled this well. We're now drilling it for the third time. We uh, drilled it once. We uh, uh, lost the well, had to sidetrack. Um, then we got down in the basement. Uh, we actually drilled it all the way down the basement. We thought some things were encouraging with press release that we'd seen uh, you know, oil indications, source rock indications. Uh, we had good reservoir, we had good seal. Uh, but we, had, we weren't able to get tools down in there to, to actually physically capture the oil uh, if it's there. So uh, we now are on the second sidetrack. We're getting close to hitting the basement again. Uh, we're hoping you know, in the next two weeks we'll be able to uh, finish this well and uh, make an announcement. Again, from the logs and from the indications, we're very bullish that it actually is going to contain oil. But uh, having been bitten by this in the past, including our well in Puntland last year, uh, I'll feel a lot better when we actually have some of that nice physical oil uh, uh, that we can put our hands on. So the plan here would be to log this well probably in the next uh, week, uh, run any NDT samples and try to get a sample of the uh, fluid in the reservoirs, uh, and then uh, assuming that that's uh, Positive, uh, we'll go ahead and test the well. We've got test equipment on the on the rig site, and we'll be prepared to test the well. So, if this is successful, uh, or even I think at this point we've seen enough encouragement that we're we're we're, we're building this location on Tutule, which is the next rig site over. Uh, essentially, in Savisa, we believe we've proven source, we've proven seal, we've proven reservoir. The only thing we possibly would fail still is trap. Tule is a very nice looking trap. It's a big porch block bounded by faults on both sides. The sh that thick shale that we saw on both sides. So we think it's a, it's, it's a, a, a very low risk trap. So that'll be um, very likely the next well we drill in this base. I'm also getting, and, 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 and I, I go back to the, uh, the statement I made that opening up to this, this is the Savisa well, this is the Tutule well. The thing that's got us really excited really here is that every one of these fault blocks is a potential oil field. So if we prove that this source rock, uh, this petroleum system is working, uh, not only all of these fault blocks over here, but on the other side of the river, we see a big four-way dip close annex line. We've got about two lines now, this line and this line in between. Uh, we see a big basin opening up that could be a source rock basin. So I think we're quite excited about Sao Tomo. I think if you look at Tullo's success in the uh, the, uh, the ramp play, as they call it up in uh, Uganda, looks very similar. The same type of fault blocks, the same type of geometry, uh, and this is where they found about half of their, their two billion barrels of oil. Left. So I think we're we're quite excited about this, uh, but we'll all feel a little better when we actually float oil out of that well. Uh, the other basin we're getting very excited about is the Chubahar Basin. This will be the first time we've seen these slides because this is the first time they've been available. So this basin was a very frontier basin, didn't even have gravity in it. Uh, we went in and shot gravity, and now we've finished shooting our 1,250 kilometers of seismic, and we've mapped all of these prospects and needs in this basin. We've identified two deep basin areas, particularly this one here that we think is source rock generative, and, uh, and most importantly, we've got a bunch of bright spots here. Bright spots are, are amplitude anomalies on seismic that indicate oil generation. So we're quite excited about this basin. Uh, we'll be drilling the first well to Neil up here, uh, just right here in, the, in this corner, right up here from this cook and pot. It's not the biggest prospect we've got, but it's the lowest risk one. Again, the important thing here is not necessarily to find a big oil field with the first well, it's to prove that the system works because we've got so much running room around it. This is a very large prospect. It's segmented into several different fault blocks, but uh, if this, this well over here, which is uh, to Neil on trend, Proves up this source kitchen and this, this uh, uh, basin, similar to what we saw down in uh, Bokatar. All of these prospects become very, uh, very uh, uh, low risk and very uh, uh, exciting. So, again, Tullow ranks.
makes this basin uh, uh, second, uh, right behind uh, uh, the Oak and Parrot Basin as far as what they see as productivity. So we're, we're quite excited to, to get in and drill that well. That'll be probably the first quarter of this year we'll be able to drill it. If that works, this again is that Two Bahar Basin, the good news is we've got this whole basin sewed up to the north. So we've signed this study area, which has now been converted to a PSC, 42,000 square kilometers with at least three different sub basins in it, some of which look very deep on the granite. So this is the one we brought in our partner fellow, or sorry, our partner Marathon. Marathon's coming in 50%. They're going to pay 100% of the cost uh, of the seismic program and the PSTP. This one could be quite interesting. We already do see tar and oil slicks along these lakes, indicating that there is a, a source out there. So this, this is a lot of running room for us. And again, uh, this basin is just about the size of the Locatara Basin, which is just about the size of Lake Albert. And so uh, again, this area is about three times the size of the, of the Locatara Basin, Lake Albert. The other one that we still like, and uh, for a number of reasons, it is our Cretaceous play, the Omni Rob. So this is block nine, where again, we're 50 50 partners with Marathon. Uh, high Pi was the well we drilled last year. We did find hydrocarbons there. Again, we don't know if it's light oil or gas condensate, and we don't know if it's commercial. It's quite deep, it's almost 4,000 meters. Um, there's a, but it does, it is in the same basin as uh, basically the, uh, the Bahasi project, which is the prospect, which is what we're going to be drilling first. The thing we like about Mahasi is it's half the depth and it's twice the size of Pai Pai. So the reservoir should be better quality. It should definitely be oil versus gas condensate. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a very big prospect. 320 million barrels, most likely 650 million max. Um, the other thing I quite like about this is it will cost us zero to drill. Marathon's paying 100% of our cost here, so this is basically a free well to test this concept. We also like this prospect, Sala. Sala's on the other side of the basin. It is our biggest prospect we've got in our portfolio. It's 400 million, most likely almost a million barrels max. Uh, it does have a gas risk, though. We did drill a well down dip called Bodal, and I think there is a risk of gas here. So it's our second choice, but uh, I think we're, we're, uh, we're, we're in discussions with our partner, Marathon, to make this into a firm well. And I think there's a very good likelihood we'll drill this well back to back. We want to spend a little bit of time talking about Horn. And, uh, you know, Horn is still a subsidiary of Africa Oil. We own 45% of it. We have effective mine management in the company. Uh, obviously, we were we were a little disappointed last year when we didn't uh, produce oil from this well, uh, but we were encouraged that we actually proved that the hydrocarbon system. We do have source rock. We do have reservoirs. We do have seal. So we're encouraged enough that we committed to the next phase. Uh, we've got these blocks for three more years now. They, they don't expire until January of 2016. Uh, we have one well commitment in each of these blocks. So geologically, we're quite excited. Politically, uh, it's a, a good news, bad news story in Somalia. The good news is that they now have a central government that's, in, that, that's uh, basically being recognized around the world. The British government has their first uh, ambassador to, the, to Somalia in over 20 years. They've effectively routed Al-Shabaab out of here. Their overall political situation in Somalia is probably the best it's been in the past, in the past 25 years. The bad news is now that there's a lot of internal wrangling between the central government and the provinces. Uh, we're in the Puntland province here. Uh, there's another province called Somaliland. Both of these have basically acted as autonomous provinces for the last 15 years or so, and, and done fairly well, especially in the, in the case of Somaliland. The central government now is, is, is in a bit of argument as to who's going to be <coughs> in the natural resources. So our position now is sitting back and letting that sort itself out. Uh, we have fair, fairly high confidence that if it's going to be settled in the favor of Somaliland and Puntland, that the, the existing PSA they're going to stand. Uh, we've been consulting with the, many uh, Western powers and they believe that is the case as well. But we're not going to be spending much money on that until we uh, get that sorted out. The next phase is to go in and shoot some more seismic in Darur. There's also a border issue between Somaliland and Portland on the, the southern block, and we're trying to work through that as well. So, bottom line in, the, in Somalia, geologically quite attractive, politically it still needs to be worked out a bit. Um, but the other thing we are doing with Horn, uh, we're not letting Horn just sit back. Uh, we, 
we are using corn now as our, as our major new venture uh, vehicle. So Africa Oil, we pretty much decided we're not going to be doing any new ventures in. I think we've got all the land we need. I think people have put their money in with the uh, expectation that uh, we're going to spend that money uh, on the blocks that we have and on the basins that we have. But not the case with corn. Corn we see as a, a possibility of growing as uh, another Africa Oil, uh, basically an expiration focused vehicle. So we're looking at uh, uh, four or five deals right now, primarily in the southern trend of the rip, uh, in the tertiary rip down in areas like Colombia, Malawi, uh, Tanzania, uh, Mozambique, um, trying to re replicate the, uh, the same success we had in Africa. So we're getting quite close on several of those deals. Uh, I think uh, uh, we're hoping within the next uh, six to eight weeks to have a, at least one or two of those deals uh, signed up. And, and that'll really be uh, the way I would characterize corn is we're going to have this good option on Somalia that we think is going to work in the end, but we aren't going to sit and wait for that. We're going to go ahead and aggressively look for a new venture to, to, to get it up and running again. So again, most of you have seen this table before. Um, this is the reason we come to East Africa. There's just not many places on Earth you can look for 28 billion barrels of prospective resource onshore in good contract terms where you basically have a whole basin. So um, in a nutshell, what we're trying to do in the next year or two is, is to move as much of this unrisk prospective resource, recoverable resource, into risked um, prospective resource, or even better, contingent resource or TP bonds. And that's kind of the nature of what we're going to be doing over the next couple of years, is trying to take the risk out of these, these prospective resources and turn them into hard value. In our minds, two people. So again, we've got uh, six rigs going. We'll have six rigs going. You'll, I think you'll see a fairly significant change in these numbers. We are going to be doing a, a mid-year update. So we did not update these numbers at the end of last year because, frankly, we just didn't have enough activity to cause a major change. But now that we've tested Gamma and we've tested Fliga, um, we'll have the Atuco results. We'll have the Acalas results. Um, we'll have the Sabisa results. We also have all of the new seismic that we've collected that isn't on this slide, like the Chupahara Fear Basin doesn't appear anywhere on this slide. So sometime in August, latest early September, we'll come out with a mid-year update. I think you'll see a significant improvement. Um, you know, these numbers are gonna grow. More importantly, these numbers and the contingent resource numbers are going to be growing dramatically. So I think that's gonna be a big piece of news going on.